good evening everybody i welcome uh, one and all to this class uh, this is the last class on infections in pregnancy and a couple of announcements i always like to make with uh, every class that starts uh, the first announcement that i'd like to make is that my telegram channel uh, through which you join this class is a very very important portal not only to join the class but a lot of things that i keep doing so actually the activity the interactive activity that i do currently is basically this class it's a live class so you have full liberty of participating in the class it's a free class it's not only meant for my uh, you know usual students everybody and anybody that means including the practicing gynecologist to the students first year second year third years ms students md students dnb and dgo students of course those who are planning to give dnb exam those students can also join at this particular time that is 9 pm usually i keep it on a sunday but due to certain reasons for some time i've been keeping it either on a monday and most probably from henceforth i'll be keeping it on saturday which is the favorite time of almost all my students i had a poll earlier on and i got to know that this is your uh, pretty favorite time uh, some of you of course will be always on duty so this is there comes a second announcement that all those who miss these classes for whatever reasons you are on duty or emergency call you can always see the chan uh, this class on the same telegram portal so it's not just important for the live classes a lot of questions a lot of queries that my students keep asking me i usually post the answer on this platform so as to everybody can see the answer all the queries usually that i see if it's a personally asked question i usually answer there but if i feel that it's of importance to majority of the crowd i usually put that uh, guidelines or those study and that material or that answer here on the telegram chat the third important aspect of this telegram channel is also the announcements which are very very important henceforth uh, there are a couple of changes which are going to be made in the course uh, considering the demands and requests of almost all my students uh, you know everywhere across india uh, who've got uh, you know a, a different uh, set of uh, uh, you know requests about them some people want uh, installments which i have recently introduced some people want uh, you know this um, validity to be changed so that if they are closer to the exams they want lesser validity with lesser price and considering all your requests all your demands and i'm trying to incorporate them to make uh, you know space for everybody and everybody i'm trying to make them everybody happy and satisfied which is my main motto that you learn better and you learn well at the most affordable price so these announcements are going to be made on this channel of mine so always stay in touch with this channel please do not you know mute the notifications unmute them probably put them up on you know uh, the um, uh, this thing uh, the ringer because i usually do not disturb by giving a lot of uh, you know uh, announcements usually one announcement comes in the whole um, maybe 2 to 3 days and that's also a very important essential announcement otherwise uh, you know materials are added which uh, obviously you'll be alerted accordingly but not a lot of disturbance comes through it so always and always unmute the um, you know the notifications for this channel okay so i think by now we've got the kind of um, crowd that i needed for it and at least we can start then people can join it so uh, let me begin this class today starting with malaria and pregnancy and like i say always keep your chat box on uh, let me also give this as a little bit of reminder to you so if you go to my channel okay from where you joined the class there's always two three messages always given and in comment below or comment in this section or something like that is written behind every uh, little uh, message that i send once you click that you automatically go to the chat area and there you can type whatever you feel like whenever my questions are asked so be alert in that area and uh, keep replying because all my classes usually are very very interactive i want everybody to be involved right wrong doesn't matter answers matter alertness matter and since i'm giving you this time to you know uh, capture maximum in the class i want you to kind of uh, gain at least 70% i want you to remember 70% of my lecture when when you stop and finish the class and you will get it if you pay a little bit of attention because i keep revising things when we go so try to memorize as much as possible and vibe as much as possible with my class and by the end of the class i'm sure that you'll be able to retain a lot and it will be lesser of an of an effort for you which is my main uh, you know motive uh, in order to give this class in the first place so uh, malaria and pregnancy we start with 
so you know it's a protozoal infection it's caused by one of the four species the species you know vivax is there ovale is there malaria is there and the notorious of all falciparum is there okay uh, out of 300 to 500 million people who are affected worldwide about 2 million people are affected annually in india now i again would like to stress upon this that these uh, you know these uh, slides and everything i've tried to make from again from foxy and most of my recommendations and these guidelines will be taken up from foxy which is an indian body and a certain of course the others are uh, from icog as well why do i do that again because indian scenario indian species indian resources everything is important when you make guidelines uh, for a nation we cannot blindly follow the western world because our resources resource will be a poor population wise we are more geographical and demographic conditions are different in india so obviously our guidelines have to be different from the european world so we go mostly by the indian guidelines and see how densely affected we people are so when you study these uh, foreign authors books malaria is like a very small topic but when in india where this population is so magnifold we have to uh, study it properly because nobody is going to you know uh, forgive you if the patient comes to you in pregnancy with this kind of symptoms and you're not able to diagnose this patient earlier on you refer him her the patient here and there they are scared of giving the uh, treatment and then finally the patient comes to you pretty late and then she's you know furious on you why didn't you uh, you know diagnose it in the first place okay so anyways you need to know these things and you need to know them well so in endemic areas it might complicate the pregnancy if you are delay you've got delayed it now you know giving the um, uh, treatment um, it can complicate the pregnancy in with multiple uh, levels of uh, you know disorders so basically how do you understand malaria is very easy to identify you know why because specific feature is fever with rigor and chills okay headache myalgia happens in most of the disease Head headache myalgia malaise but anemia jaundice that take over in malaria they're not very easily seen so you can easily you know identify malaria and you know malaria is one fever which will not respond to your usual regular antibiotics so if the 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 fever is not responding well you either think of a viral disease or you think of malaria definitely right and then there is hepatomegaly splenomegaly you already late in that case intravascular hemolysis and thrombocytopenia and falciparum malaria is more dangerous can even be life threatening uh, you know because it's got so many complications which you might have uh, at least heard before you know it causes uh cerebral uh, meningitis cerebral uh, if you might have heard malaria these are all complications of falciparum malaria so it's very very notorious otherwise of course the clinical features they include fever with chills rigor very specific you know it is you know the, the patient is you have to keep putting blankets over blankets the patient is going to be you know very uh, actively uh, agitated and uh, shivering so it's very you know if anybody has seen the rigors of uh, malarial fever that patient is not that person is not going to forget when she sees it again so obviously malaise myalgia I, sp I spoke about it before so it can cause renal failure coma death even falciparum malaria it's that notorious now we'll try to understand what are the effects of pregnancy on malaria course that means does pregnancy help in the propagation of malarial parasite what so one thing is for sure that there is decreased immunity during pregnancy right so there are so many changes happening in cell mediated immunity and uh, humoral immunity that means antibody production everything is a little towards the lower side so there is decreased immunity here at the same time you know there is diversion of proteins from the immune system basically for the growth of the baby okay so all these things they increase the parasitemia and that increases with advancing pregnancy so the attacks of fever they are more frequent in the third trimester okay uh, as compared to the first trimester placental infections uh, placental and fetal infections can also occur but how many time have you heard about uh, this being teratogenic never right so malaria affects the health of the mother the health of the fetus but we do not know about whether the uh, teratogenic effects have ever been reported so uh, well these are basically the the facts about malaria and we're still about uh, effects of malaria on pregnancy so the red cells become more rigid they become more sticky they cause blockage of microcirculation this is basically the pathogenesis of uh, malaria so malarial parasite you know how it acts it basically has this uh, uh, you know this erythrocytic uh, phase as well in which it starts 
you know damaging the red blood cells and how does it do that it becomes it makes them more rigid so once there is parasitemia and it you know that schizont stage in which the uh, schizont infects the erythrocytes you have those erythrocytes which are affected with schizonts they become more rigid they become more sticky and they become very difficult to pass through the microcirculation through the capillaries so there is a lot of hemolysis there okay and because of which there is this uh, jaundice as one of the features of malaria so and they obviously they cause this blocking of the um you know my you know these capillaries so there's a lot of damage also in the microcirculation because of which there is a renal failure because of which there is cerebral edema because you have very small and fine capillaries in the <coughs> kidney and in the brain so if there's any damage or any insult which happens to these capillaries the renal failure takes place and cerebral edema takes place these infected cells of course they undergo hemolysis and they have their own you know uh, sequelae which i just spoke about there is jaundice obviously there is because of less uh, you know oxygen carrying capacity there is a lot of uh, a problem in the uh, body because of difficulty in you know uh, uh, production and passage of nutrients to the vital organs so every vital organ starts getting damaged on the way if it's not properly treated and why are these happening why are these complications happening because of packing of intervillous spaces by the parasite and the macrophages so much of parasitemia happening hemolysis happening macrophages start taking you know coming into for the rescue and there's a lot of you know um or what do i say sequestration of dead uh, particles even in the intervillous spaces so the exchange is difficult the sequestration uh, makes it more uh, more difficult for the exchange of vital nutrients to take place and a lot of organ damage ensues um i think that's about it for this slide so basically you have seen the maternal effects and you've seen the fetal effects as far as maternal effects are concerned there are many you know pyrexia is definitely there perspiration is there pallor will be there the first stage because there's going to be hemolytic anemia because of so much of hemolysis and uh, while well, we'll not go to that there could be uh, metabolic acidosis hypoglycemia even because it's seven times more likely because of excessive glucose consumption because of parasitemia that always happens okay there's nothing new about it that's why we insist on taking regular meals to the patient no matter how the patient is you know get ag getting agitated doesn't want to take anything but there's so much of hy hypoglycemia that ensues now just imagine a patient who's pregnant in that patient when such a thing happens uh well the effects are multiplied jaundice i just spoke to you renal failure we spoke about splenomegaly hepatomegaly because finally all the sequestration is taking place where it is taking place in one of these uh, you know these organs so finally the organs are also affected at one point or the other and what are the fetal effects so there is you know always like what happens is in case of any parasitemia there is increased risk of miscarriage right preterm delivery always remember this this uh, you know whether you whether it it's written in the book or not but we're talking about any you know uh, infection we've been through so many infections by now okay you've been with me through this entire journey of so many infections we did up to now and you've seen that if you until unless you there are known teratogenic effect of any particular disease you can at least write down these three four things which are risk of miscarriage preterm delivery prom and fetal uh, growth restriction you can easily write them down so fetal anemia congenital malaria apart from these are specific for malaria otherwise you can always write down those things which i just spoke now how do you diagnose malaria i don't think i have to even tell you this you know that there is a peripheral blood smear which is easily formed but has to be formed at the time of fever okay suspecting malaria or when the fever has died out then you throw for it you you might or might not find the uh, parasite but a you know peripheral film made at the time of uh, you know this fever with chills you will mostly see the parasite so it's very easily so are you seeing the difference in the approach to the patient it's not like your normal regular test here there is no serology all right here the even the treatment is going to be very different so until unless you are minded you know that i i always say whenever you come you know you can only treat the patient once you are minded for that uh, disease if you have that differential diagnosis in your mind because until and unless you are malaria minded you will never go through all these tests so when you are giving a battery of tests always include peripheral smear if a patient has come to you with fever because india happens to be one of the endemic zones for malaria all right so we need to go through 
this because now when you treat, think about the treatment of malaria even that is not very uh, you know straightforward giving the broad spectrum antibiotics nothing is going to happen but there is a very good potent treatment that means see if you treat a disease let's say dengue in pregnancy with let's say um, cephalosporins okay a patient usually comes to us with fever you at least start with prophylactic antibiotics even in case of viral infections though we know that there is no rule but suppose just in case it's a, some you know uh, super added infection we start with this uh, uh, cephalosporins and patient uh, kind of improves remarkably not because the uh, you know the virus is being treated but some secondary infections were being treated but when a patient comes to you with this kind of uh, you know a position with when you know it's clear cut it's malaria and if you keep giving cephalosporins when the actual treatment is something else not only are you doing the wrong thing but at the same time a very good you know drug is being left over for just a wrong uh, concept in your mind that it might be a super added bacterial infection over a viral infection so if a viral infection you've not treated and you've started giving uh, antibiotics you are still pardonable because actually there is no you know uh, full proof treatment for viral disease but if a malaria you start treating with cephalosporins okay not only are you going in the wrong direction but you're even losing out on a very important drug which could have saved the patient a lot of misery that's what i'm trying to tell you and so with this introduction we come to treatment treatment must be commenced immediately after the diagnosis very important commonly used anti malarial drugs are usually safe in pregnancy so chloroquine happens to be the treatment of choice for malaria and your the dose should be on your fingertips okay four tablets of chloroquine phosphate 150 mg each are given initially followed by two tablets after 6 hours and then two tablets once a day for two days all right so first of all you give four tablets of chloroquine four tablets of chloroquine 150 mg each in the initial uh, you know time the moment the patient comes to you and you go to the diagnosis followed by two tablets given 6 hours apart and then two two tablets once a day for two days to come it's safe for the fever 